This episode of Love Lauren is sponsored by Scott Bonner Fabrication and Parts. Perth Powder Coaters at 25 Fairbrother in Belmont, just picking up the mower bits and bobs that uh, John's coated for me. He's done a great job of it, they're in the boot, so we're ready to go home and start reassembly at long last. Highly recommend these guys, they've done a nice job of it as far as I can tell so far. A few little screw holes to tap out and a little bit of cleanup to do, but um, overall it looks like a really professional great job, much better than I could have done by hand. Just got a couple of the Dulux um, color chips here um, that they sent me. You can. You can hop online and order these things, they're free. Um, I think you can order, only order two at a time, but I've put in two orders. Got uh, two separate deliveries, I believe, but um, you know they do it. They have a couple different color options. This is called the um, Aztec Silvers under the Surreal Effects category or heading. And they also do blues and um, yeah, a whole range of other colors as well um, in the hammer effect or, or gloss or whatever you're after. I basically just walked into the powder coaters and said, I'd like Aztec Silver, please. and um, yeah, that was cool, there was no problem, so they seem to stock it. And it's, um, it seems to be quite a popular colour, I believe, as well. So, I've finally made it home from the powder coaters um, with the 14-inch the here. Um, just got everything laid out to make sure um, everything was sort of in the same place and just to get a sense of what sort of lies ahead of me. Basically done um, the, the bulk of the mower in that um, Aztec Silver. It's kind of a... It's kind of black with a silver fleck through it, I guess you call it, or silver with a black fleck through it. I don't, I don't know. But it's definitely, um, you know, it's got that hammered texture, which is sort of classic to these mowers and just looks awesome. And it's also a, you know, baked powder coat, so it's, um, it should be one of the more durable finishing options available. of the mower in that. Um, you know, the inside and outside, the catcher, the deflector, the chain case, the clutch body and clutch cone, um, the handlebar, the handlebar plate. That's another better example, maybe, as sort of how that looks. Front and back, and of course the the deck and the two sides of the mower itself. Um, went for sort of a two-tone look for the this part of the the clutch fork assembly, that little plate sits underneath, and that's been done in a satin black, which you can sort of get a better sense of on some of these other parts. I've done the little bearing cups as well, the clutch lever, the adjuster, the height adjuster, and things like the um, the the throttle lever uh, in the same satin black. And you can probably see them back here as well, the um, the bearing holders for the reel. Um, front, back, inside and out. I wasn't sure how that was going to work, but um, so far so good. I would have masked the insides of these bits where the bearing is going to sit. Um, especially um, things like this guy and just, this, just the bits where they're a bit tight coming out. But um, nonetheless, they've been done the way they were done by the powder coaters. And um, may have a little bit of cleanup work ahead of me. We'll see how we go in terms of the fit. Um, luckily, you know, this one, that was one of the, the tighter bearings to get off of there. Um, so luckily they did tape that one up for me. Yeah, I even did these little um, little clips um, for the for the throttle cable that goes up the handlebar and stuff. So that's kind of cool, I think. The deflector um, clamps. And the cradle for the the front roller as well, which is kind of cool, I think. Um, what I didn't do was the the axle that runs um, through the the center body of that um, of that roller. That's um, you know obviously it's a it's a shaft that needs to be um, you know precise in terms of its fit, so it, it needed to be kept clean. Um, the one thing they didn't do for me as well was the um, 
the the main drive shaft um, that comes out of the clutch body um, at the top of the machine. Um, I did ask them to do that, but they didn't um, they didn't quite feel comfortable doing it in terms of masking and stuff like that um, where they should start and end. So they left it, which is probably a good decision in the end. I'll just um, give it a spray of something, some satin black, and hopefully get a, a reasonable match to the powder coat. But um, yeah, I don't know. It would have been nice if they'd done it because it would have looked pretty cool. And the other thing I did in the satin was the um, the handlebars. So, you know, rather than re-chrome these things, which would have been quite expensive, basically threw the handlebars into the mix. Um, and uh, and that was all well, sorted for me in one shot. Um, the other thing the other thing I didn't do was the reel. Um, I've just sprayed that myself with a, a matte black primer. I did that um, so that it would be, you know, an easy thing to, to repair if it chips or needs needs a bit of love. Um, it probably, you know, a bit of spray could have probably gone over the powder coat if necessary, but, um, you know, it just wasn't there when I was working on the reel in terms of getting it sharp and all that stuff, so it's cool. It'll be fine. That's my clutch cone. They, they took the liberty of powder coating a bit of the inside. probably wasn't necessary. Um, they also um, confused my um, my masking instructions for this piece. Obviously, we don't want that painted, so that's fine. That's good. But I would have liked to have had this um, conical section um, powder coated and possibly the face. They did actually do the face, but I've sanded it off now um, because that's where the, the thrust pad bears up against. But it would have been nice to have had that section done. Again, I'll just um, pop some, some black matte on there, I guess, or the black satin spray. And hopefully it's going to come up alright. It'll be a bit of a challenge getting it um, sort of masked nicely, but um, it is what it is. That's the catcher. As I said, I probably should have done some extra panel beading on that, especially at the front end here. You can really see how bang that, banged up that is. I probably should have taken the chain cover and the catcher somewhere to have them adjusted professionally before going to the hassle of powder coating, but I didn't. When I first looked at it, when I was sanding it back and getting it ready for the powder coaters, I thought, oh, it doesn't actually look that bad, but, um, you know, just the way that catches the light, you can really, <laughs> you can really see just how bad it actually is. But, um, like I say, it's not going to go in a collection, it's going to be used. The last comment I'd make around all this stuff is the, um, the pricing. So, I did the sandblasting myself for a carton of beer, which is cost about 50 bucks, so that's fine. The powder coating cost 200, which basically included um, a primer and um, then the powder coat over the top. Um, done professionally, I didn't have to think about it. It took them a couple of weeks to get around to the job because it was a little job compared to some of the bigger stuff they were doing, but you know, whatever. So, you know, apart from the weight um, and the expense, um, it was a much easier process. Um, obviously, these guys are you know professional and they're trained and know how to you know do this stuff. They do it day in day. Out. They did a good job in general. Really happy with the result. And you know, two hundred dollars compared to I don't know. Let's say you know I bought a, a seven fifty mil tin for the seventeen inch twin of the Hammerite paint. That was forty bucks. I put it over top of a primer. Those are twelve or fourteen dollars a can. Uh, I used three cans, I think, of the etch primer on that machine. So. You know, it starts that up, and then like the time itself to actually apply all that stuff, let it dry, get the insides and the outsides, and the bottoms and the tops, and flip it all around, or hang it up if you want to, whatever. You know, sort of, it takes time as well, which um, is free um, to an extent. When you're paying sort of, let's say, eighty to hundred dollars in materials as it is, um, to pay an, an extra hundred bucks to have it done professionally and to achieve this standard and the durability i think it's worth i think it's worth doing um definitely worth shopping around some places will do the sandblasting for you as well um for an extra 50 bucks or whatever you know you know for, for me to do this all of these parts myself it took you know three or four or five hours um standing at the sandblasting cabinet um, and i came home with you know grit in my eyes and you know, felt and up my nose. I felt pretty average for a couple of days afterwards um, because obviously I suck at sandblasting and, um, you know, I'd never done it before. Um, but, um, you know, again, it took time. It was relatively cheap, but it took my time as well. Um, petrol to get out there and that sort of thing. So, you know, to just be able to drop it all off, let someone else do it, pay an extra few bucks and get it done. 
um, and done to a high standard, I think there's um, there's some merit in that.